Hi, Nick. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. What's going on? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Just uh, got done listening to the album, and I love everything about it. It's so new to me, like, the way, uh, like, new funk and emo are sort of blended together. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We worked really, really diligently on this one. Like, it was a... For uh, for us doing a lot of uh, passing demos around, you know, via, you know, uh, I guess file sharing and kind of just going back and forth, like, we were all very involved. Like, we had a lot of time where we were just, like, you know, getting together at my house and communicating, like, lyrics, and, you know, certain parts, what we could do better, what we can take out, you know, like, all just, it, it was... It, it came out very well for how we did it. I'm proud of it. Yeah, you should be. Um, I love Criminal, especially because, one, I feel like it's a nod to Michael Jackson and the whole 80s pop icon uh, sound. Oh, yeah. But also, it's just a hard-hitting, emotional song overall. So what inspired that track in the first place? Um... Vocally or uh, lyrically, I know it was mostly about, um, you know, just a relationship that was not going well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's pretty evident in the lyrics, you know, talking about being, you know, playing the victim and, you know, just constantly being made, uh, being made to feel that, like, you know, he's he was the criminal in the relationship, you know, Um musically though it was it was very much uh we we tried to push our boundaries i think just um you know i uh, what what was the demo title we we titled the demo screaming part four because we have songs called screaming a serious business so we thought it was potentially going to be like part of that series mm -hmm. and then like as the song evolved it it kind of like took on a life of its own and we were like no we're just gonna have it be its own thing and um you know it, it's definitely got like that progressive feel but we wanted it to be more pop you know we wanted to have like a pop chorus and like you know i kept telling izzy like yo like channel your inner michael and like <laughs> you know like do the scatty stuff over top of this like it'll sound really sick because of how you know the guitars are accented and like that uh synth bass intro like it just all you know it, the, it it came about very well absolutely that was definitely accomplished it does sound really sick and cool and just it's like my new favorite song <laughs> actually thank you you're welcome thank you <laughs> um but also with i'm gonna ask you about a couple of the tracks because so many mm -hmm. stood out to me but i thought gemini one was an interesting name for uh a record title but then two i just love the whole sound of it because i feel like from your last record that was maybe more a beat this one's a little less so so yeah, one I, yeah no what were you gonna say sorry oh i'm sorry <laughs> um yeah my first question was like with gemini um why did you go with that uh record title and then yeah mm -hmm. like the difference between the last album being more upbeat and then this one being a little bit more i think um, emotional so yeah um, I guess album title wise we felt like it was kind of the evil twin sister to Sunset on this generation so we went with like same artist very similar art style but just a little darker and um, I I think that kind of ties into uh, you know what, what you're feeling as far as uh, you know Sunset being a little bit more um, I don't, Sunset to me, like the first half of Sunset was more of an upbeat vibe, right? And then the second half of the record was very vibey and kind of chill and almost like, uh, like speed sounding, right? I think, uh, I think Gemini is a little bit more, uh, song wise, it's a little bit more structured and controlled but there it there it has more chaotic moments and it's a little darker i guess um yeah that that's the, the biggest takeaway for me was like on 
on this album we made like the slower songs a little slower like rescue me like being a ballad moving on is a like another power ballad track criminal we wanted it to be like you know this is like a progressive rock track but with pop vocals you know like it was just more controlled i guess it was more of a controlled experiment than sunset was kind of a was a kind of a free-for-all i think lyrically too i mean izzy's going through it or he was going through it <laughs> and he wrote about it on this album the last album like 90 percent of the lyrics were like a collaboration between him and i so mm -hmm. i write a lot more vague sounding lyrical content um i think than him he's a little bit more straightforward he's better at um uh telling stories than i am mm -hmm. And I think because of that, the, the nature of that beast, you kind of hear the emotional side of Izzy on this album. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I think your point about songwriting and the way you guys approach it differently is so interesting. Um, is there uh, a universe where you would write more personally about your life or relationships or what have you? Me personally, I kind of... Uh... I, I like writing a little bit more vague and not so straightforward personally. Mm -hmm. Like for me, like I, I love, um, you know, old Samson because it almost doesn't make sense, but it's so interesting at the same time. <laughs> or like, you, you know, Anthony green is really good at piecing things together and kind of letting the listener have like creative control over how they feel about it. Or, um, I guess, uh, how they want to interpret it. Um, so for, for me personally, I guess that's that's what I like. Uh, so no, I guess I don't see <laughs> in an alternate universe. No, I, I that that's what I'm into. You never know. Yeah, there could always be something that comes up and maybe you can change your mind. But I yeah. think the way you guys work together is great <laughs> so far. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, also, I thought the whole idea of blending like hardcore and new funk is new, at least for me, and just an interesting combination. So what attracted you and the band to sort of explore that marriage of those two genres? Well, we really liked uh, Izzy's vocals when he auditioned for the band. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we still kind of I mean, we were going in a more of a funky pop direction, as is, even, like, up until we parted ways with Quinn. Like, even the last couple songs with Quinn were more in that vein as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I guess I kind of just write guitar-wise, like, whatever I'm feeling, like, whatever I come up with and just show the guys. And, you know, like, we literally all just have our own individual skill sets and put them together, and you kind of just get what you get we all have really random influences too like we're all influenced by totally different things so what would your uh, personal musical influences be um, guitar wise I'm a huge uh, Van Halen fan mm -hmm. uh, grew up on Van Halen so that's always been uh, like my all time favorite um, in I guess post rock or modern rock I was huge into Seosin in high school uh Circus Revive, uh, The Dangerous Summer, Paramore, Dance Gavin Dance, like that whole style of music. And then uh, got very into like retro synthwave stuff, like The Midnight, FM84, Time Cop 83, like uh, The Bad Dreamers, all kinds of like retro sounding, anything that sounds like a John Carpenter soundtrack, like I'm in. <laughs> so that, that's those are my influences. Awesome. Um, also, the track You're Not Alone to me focuses on such a, a dark subject matter of somebody sort of coming of age in the toxic household, which I think is such like a personal subject. Um, I guess what prompted that sort of honest song? Yeah, um you would you would definitely have to talk to Izzy, I guess, more about the personal side of it. I know as soon as he heard the Roe v. Wade 
ruling, he was like, oh man, I've had, you know, I have an idea that comes from that mm. and started writing about it. And like, you know, he, in that song specifically, I don't think, you know, there's not a whole lot of resolve at the end of that, right? Like it kind of just tells what happened, but there's no resolve. And I think, you know, you can kind of conclude that, you know, there's a lot of um, terrible scenarios that people are in, mm -hmm. or women specifically. And in that kind of scenario, like what it would be like if you couldn't, you know, you know, have an abortion or whatever the case may be. I don't know if that's like specific, you know, I, I don't know if that's the exact um, conclusion, but in my mind, like that's kind of how I interpreted it was, you know, fucked up things happen. And, you know, due to that, you know, the ruling, it's like, whoa, like, you know, terrible situation to be in and you can't do anything about it. So, and he has two daughters, so I think mm -hmm. it, it hit home for him. He was, he was, you know, pretty upset. Oh, no, no, that, that makes sense. I feel like the overturning of Roe v. Wade affects a lot of people's lives, but right, especially women and um, his daughters and people who, women who are in this next generation certainly living with less rights, you know, than right. the previous ones have had. Yeah. Um, Sucks, it's shitty. Yeah, absolutely. Um do you guys see yourselves making any more um, politically oriented tracks like that? Or is this just like a one time thing? Cause it was just so personal for him. You never know. You never know. I think it just depends on uh, whatever he's feeling mm. that day. You know, like it was kind of funny with this album process as far as vocals went, because I kind of locked him in my house <laughs> for like two weeks um when he was he was moving out of the place he was living in and i was like oh why don't you set up your studio at my house in my spare bedroom <laughs> and lock yourself in there and finish this fucking album he was like yeah that's a great idea so and then i when i came home from work he'd be done with a song he'd be like you want to hear like what i came up with today i'm like yeah <laughs> and uh one day i came home and like that was one of the songs and it's like oh shit like this isn't about uh a breakup or this isn't about like your relationship trouble this is like a real in, not to take away from his emotions and you know mm -hmm. what he was writing about prior but that's the oddball on the record for mm -hmm. sure so yeah it was it was just very interesting to hear that out of left field and musically i would have never thought that's what that song would end up being I had a totally different vision like for that song because the the demo was titled like horror story so of course i thought like oh this is a creepy weird sounding song <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't think like that was gonna be how it turned out so it was really cool oh no yeah i agree with you at all of those points but especially that this one is that standout song on a whole album that i feel like deals with overcoming toxicity like especially mm -hmm. in relationships so i guess what would you want listeners to get out of that in terms of like a message i guess um that it gets better you know it always gets mm -hmm. better time you know time heals all for the most part and you know you got to just kind of figure out how to get past it and you know just continue to move on right right uh, and that's and that's my favorite track on the record is moving on by the way i just think that track is awesome like all around musically uh vocally everything just the best all-around song one of the best that i think we've ever written mm -hmm. oh no i i love that song too but i also love the closer um the beauty of the masquerade i think it really ties everything together very well at the end that song um, was so cool like i wish we did a video for that song <laughs> we could have done something really cool for that i agree i love that song too yeah um speaking of music videos i know you guys have done a couple for like the singles um are you planning on doing any more once the album comes out of like you know like uh, about any of the other tracks 
It's a possibility. Um, we're we've been talking about doing like some acoustic studio session style videos as well. So we'll see like how that goes. We want to, you know, the focus right now is kind of shifted from you know just getting the album out, getting it out there, selling it on the road, and you know just getting it out there like yeah. as much as we could, as much as we can. Because I mean, when we put out Sunset during the pandemic we didn't really we weren't really able to tour on it It kind of it was a blessing and a curse because people were able to listen to it but at the same time we couldn't like spread the word about it that much because it was just you know it, we weren't able to right um yeah so do you feel like the pandemic ever hindered you guys creatively at all because i've heard that from some other bands before of like they weren't able to meet up as frequently or they had to trade for voice us, memos no. to record stuff. Right. For us, no. For us, it was like we were able to we finished Sunset like started working on this like pretty immediately after. So for us, it was kind of a blessing in disguise, but as far as the ability to tour and get out the other album, no. It, it kind of fucked us. That, that sucks. Like, I'm sorry you guys had yeah. to experience that. Um, one, it's all good. Yeah, uh, one last question. So I know you guys are starting your tour in the spring, like, really soon, which is really cool. What are you guys uh, most looking forward to about just, like, getting out and getting to tour this album? Um, I think just seeing the initial reactions of the song live. And we released, we had the CDs out. You know, most most people don't really buy CDs anymore, though. Like, we have vinyl pre-orders and, you know, a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of pre-order bundles and mm -hmm. everything on our site. But, yeah, I think that's probably the what we're most stoked for, is just being able to, like, play brand-new stuff with a brand-new album out, like, right now. Because we've never really done that. We've always, like, released a record and then toured afterwards, like, mm -hmm. weeks or months after, you know? Like, being able to actually, like, yo, this is the Gemini merchandise, the Gemini tour, like, you know, like, this is, if that makes sense, it's just all of it all at once, so. Oh, no, I think it makes sense. Um, I think it's good, I think, to be able to immediately tour afterwards, because maybe the time length between, like, touring and the album, people could maybe not forget about it so much as, like, uh just feel a bit more distant from it you know what i mean right yeah. right thank you so much for talking to me nick i appreciate it i wish you yeah, guys no, the best no with the problem. tour and the album rollout and everything thank you so much and thanks for listening to the to the record <laughs>